Welcome to our second tutorial about the Loft tool. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Transition tab. As you can see, I'm creating a polygon with six sides. It's going to be inscribed. Let's snap to the center point and place it somewhere here. Right click, done. Let's add a horizontal relation between this point and the center point or origin point. Now let's dimension it. Let's say 2.5 inches. OK. And let's finish the sketch. Now let's create a work plane. It'll be offset 2.5 inches from our sketch. OK. And let's create a second sketch now. Let's use the Polygon tool again to create an inscribed hexagon. Snap it to the origin point. Right click and done. And let's add a vertical relation between this point and the origin point. Now let's dimension the hexagon. We'll make the sides 2 inches long. Click OK. Let's exit the sketch. And let's hide work plane 1. Right click visibility. Let's activate the loft command. We'll select sketches 1 and 2. And now let's go to the transition tab. By default, automatic mapping is checked. Let's uncheck it. Right here, we've got six sets of points. The corresponding graphic lines are highlighted in the graphic area. If I select the second set of points, I can grab a point in the work area and reposition it along the edge. And you see that the value in the position column has changed. Let's enter point 75, and the mapping point moves. Let's move this mapping point as well. I can snap the point to the middle of the edge. A blue dot appears. Again, the position value changes to 0.5. Let's select Set 1, and we'll move this mapping point as well. As you see, the mapping point can't cross. We're not able to create a duplicate mapping point. Let's click OK for now. And here is our loft. Let's make some more changes to our loft. Double click, back to the transition tab. I'm going to delete all the mapping points except one set of points. Let's reposition these points, maybe here, and this one over here. You see the position value stays between 0 and 1. This value is a percentage of the distance along any one of the edges. Let's click OK. As you can see, our loft is really twisted now. Double click on the loft again. Back to the transition tab. Let me delete the last set of mapping points and click OK. And let's double click on the loft to make some more changes. Back to the transition tab. You see that inventor has checked automatic mapping for me and I've got all six points restored. We can add more points. Let's add a seventh point. I'll create a line from this point to the middle of this edge. Click OK. As you can see, the mapping points are pretty easy to manipulate. Let's double click again and go back to the transition tab. We'll add even more point sets now. Now, as I'd mentioned previously, the point sites can't cross and we're not able to make duplicate mapping. Let's click OK and see what happens. Inventor isn't able to calculate the loft. Two mapping lines intersect. Let's click Edit, and then delete my last set of points. And click OK, and Inventor is able to calculate the loft. 
Even if you follow the rules while you continue to add point sets, at some point Inventor won't be able to calculate the loft. You'll get an error message. Let's add a few more mapping points and see if we've pushed Inventor to its limit. OK. OK, it's still working. Let's try a couple more points. Inventor is still able to calculate my loft. And let's press OK. Inventor is still able to calculate this loft, but you get the idea now. The more complex the geometry becomes, the bigger the chance that Inventor won't be able to calculate your loft. This concludes our tutorial about the Loft Transition tab. In our next tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Conditions tab.